Summary of Ivy Day in the Committee Room by James Joyce Matt O'Connor, a political canvasser for the nationalist candidate in an upcoming local election, has skipped work and is rolling cigarettes in the party's committee room headquarters with Old Jack, the roomskeeper, who stokes the fading fire. O'Connor starts a cigarette with the business card of his boss, Richard Tierney, while Jack talks about his drunken teenage son and how he beats him up. He also talks about how bad the young people of Ireland are. Joe Hines, another canvasser, walks in and says that they still haven't been paid. He starts to say that Tierney is crooked and has a bad name, and he praises the other candidate, the blue-collar Colgan. He says that Tierney is thinking about giving a welcome speech to King Edward VII when he comes to Dublin. John Henchy walks in and again complains that they haven't been paid. He also joins the others in making fun of Tierney. When Hines leaves, O'Connor and Henchy talk about him and say that he might be a spy for the other side. Father Kean knocks on the door and is let in. He leaves right away because he is nervous and looking for a political figure. This makes the men talk more about Kean's recent dismissal from the church for an unnamed offense and his questionable connection to Tierney's campaign. Henchy, O'Connor, and Jack talk about Tierney's lack of motivation again. They call him a shoeboy and say they need a drink. They make jokes about nepotism and wish they could have important jobs in politics. The pub delivery boy brings a case of stout from Tierney, which is a sign from their boss who was not there. Henchy apologizes for what he said about the man and gives the boy a drink. Old Jack reluctantly helps him open a bottle, and they talk about nothing important before the boy goes. Bantam Lyons and Crofton, two more canvassers, walk in as they start to drink and talk about how well they did. When the guys ask Crofton a question, he stays quiet while Lyons makes small talk. Henchy puts bottles for the men in the fireplace because he doesn't have an opener. He hopes that the heat will pop the corks. Crofton is a conservative, and he doesn't want to work with nationalists because it makes him sad. This is why he keeps quiet. Henchy keeps talking about how good he is at canvassing, while Lyons starts to poke fun at the image of the late nationalist leader Charles Stuart Parnell, who died in shame after the public found out about his extramarital affair. On the occasion of Parnell's death, O'Connor and Henchy get angry because they won't let him be put down. Hines comes back into the fight, and O'Connor tells him to read his elegy for Parnell. Hines at first says no, but then he agrees. He then sings an eleven stanza song about Parnell that is angry at the hypocrite nationalists who turned against him. The guys clap and then stop. The room goes back to the quiet small talk it was before, and O'Connor rolls another cigarette. About the author James Joyce was born in Dublin in the middle of Ireland's fight for freedom from England. This meant that he grew up with a strong sense of Irish pride. His father was a violent drinker who hated the English. He worked as an election worker, which may have affected Joyce's story Ivy Day in the committee room. Joyce had a standard classical education, which was run by Jesuits and focused a lot on ancient Greek and Roman literature and Catholic religion. Joyce hated school when he was young, but he soaked up the classics and theology like a sponge. He got tired of Dublin when he was young, so he left home. He didn't go back very often, and when he did, he never felt happy about it. Instead, he liked living in places like Paris and Trieste on the continent. As a foreigner, it was hard for him to provide for his wife and children. He taught English, but as a writer, he had high standards and only wrote difficult, cutting-edge fiction that wasn't always popular. His autobiographical book A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, 1914-15, and his collection of short stories, Dubliners, 1914, in which Ivy Day is included, are both written in a high realist style that shows how bitter he was about his city. Joyce was never good with money, but he had a lot of self-confidence. In his later years, he depended on literary friends who saw how talented he was. His long novel Ulysses, published in 1922, is about two Dubliners over the course of a single day. Writers like Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot liked it, and a smart dealer in Paris pushed him to finish it. At the time it was written, Ulysses caused a lot of controversy because it talked about sex so openly. However, it quickly became and is still seen by many as the best English book. 
Joyce's dangerously hard magnum project, Finnegan's Wake, was published in 1939. He worked on it for 17 years with a young Samuel Beckett as his secretary and emotional support. It is one of the most creative and artistic looks at how people use language. Scholars are still obsessed with and confused by Joyce's last two books. They have made him known as one of the most creative writers in history and a key leader of the modernist movement. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.